Yes, there we go. Oh, good, good, good. Good. This is Michelle Lynn Tackett, and I am here with the wonderful, vivacious, gorgeous Miss Erica Burns. How are you, sweetie? Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me in, and I am doing okay. I am. I'm just, you know, a lot going on these days, and but it's exciting. It's definitely very exciting, and and um, you know, I'm I'm definitely just uh, yeah, just um, busy every day, but but in all the best possible ways. And I have a question. What is your social media for? I know you have TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. What do you hope to get out of those sites? Is it more of social interactivity, a business model, or is it a bit of both? Very, very good question. And to answer your question, it is a bit of both, actually. I definitely love to make new friends. I've made friends with you and many other awesome people through social media and it's really just been nice I mean you know it, there's of course you know uh, well those you know creepers here and there that reach out to you and it's just like well <laughs> but at the same time there's very positive so I definitely you know am happy to make those connections and, and realize that I'm not alone in my struggle and, and also help others to realize that they're not alone in their struggle and that we're all in together and you know especially during this time of COVID and isolation I think it's very easy for us to fall back into that place of feeling trapped and feeling like we're alone like for me feeling like that teenager again who didn't have the friends or the support that she needed and um but being able to have social media and use that as a platform to connect other people is super important and to be able to be a part of that. It's crucial for my own well-being and hopefully for the well-being of others. And then, of course, there is the aspect of branding as well. I am an artist. I have been pursuing acting for years. And to be able to share my creativity or, and also my advocacy through creating things is such a fulfill, fulfilling thing. Like I uh, had said before, I don't know if I said it before, but to have the best of both worlds, to be able to do and fight for what you love while doing what you love and, um, you know, creating. I just, I just, for me, that's always who I've been. I've always been, I've always had a big imagination and wanting to share my thoughts. And, and as of late, with, with this um, increase in social media usage and with, with the virus and everything, it's really allowed me to, you know, put my creative ideas outward to other people for them to see what goes in my mind, what goes through my mind, my creative head, and, and to, to be able to, to share that and feel, feel worth something and hopefully help others feel like they're worth something. That's a good positive message to send, and I think that it's something that we need to hear. Now, also, you and I both know that there are all sorts of different types of trans people with beliefs and stuff, and some of us are more religious and spiritual, some of us are more secular, and some of us are more conservative or more liberal-leaning or socialist or whatever, or libertarian. How do we kind of bring together people with different ideals and let them kind of see that we're all in this and that just because one of us may have a different belief system, it doesn't mean that we're not in the same boat together? That's a good question. Such a great point to bring up because that's true. There are, you know, um, trans people who are very, you know, left centered, and that makes sense because, you know, a lot of times the Republican Party or the Conservative Party has had a history of oppressing LGBTQ people and denying rights that the Democrats and the liberal uh, political individuals have been more open to providing those rights. So, makes sense. But then there are also individuals, like I find myself, you know, definitely very, very liberal when it comes to the rights of LGBTQ individuals. But then there are other things that I'm just, you know, I definitely believe in God or believe in a higher power. And for me, having faith is very important to my life and my existence and my survival. And if I don't have that, then I feel like I was still lost. So, but, but then, of course, that maybe comes into play, like, oh, well, why are you having faith, you know? That, that just go, God and Jesus or, you know, the Christianity religion does not support you. So what are you doing to yourself? You don't sell yourself short, but it's like, I'm not selling myself short. I do believe that God loves us, God has a plan for us and thinks we're wonderful, as Joyce Meyer has said, whether or not she supports us is another story. Um, but uh, basically, too, um, yeah, I think it's important, though, I suppose that's just a long-winded way of getting to the point of saying that we all are fighting for the same thing, you know, whether you're Caitlyn Jenner on the more Republican side of things or you're on the more liberal side of things, you know, we're all trying to be who we 
are and have the ability to be who we are and to not feel worried that we're going to get fired from our jobs, we're going to get beat up in school, that we're going to, you know, just well be murdered or anything like that. It's, it's so important to just realize that we're in this big fight together. We might not have a lot in common with other trans individuals. We might have a lot in common with other trans individuals, but at the end of the day, we are all fighting for one big important thing that is very crucial and, and it's important to come together and help better the world and maybe open the world up to new possibilities that we didn't even know was there because there was just so much closed-mindedness and oppression. Absolutely, and another thing is a large percentage of LGBTQ people live with their family, and there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes it can make you feel like you're an adult child and that you're a failure, that you don't measure up to other people. How do you do deal with that so that way you can move forward? Exactly. Thank you so much for asking that because that speaks to me in my time in the recent decade or this decade that we're in with with the virus and, and then moving back in with my parents and myself, feeling like that adult child that just didn't get it right in any facet and questioning at times, you know, if I had lost my way and going down this path if I had and if I should have listened to my conservative Catholic upbringing and just not been so stubborn, you know, and, and it's awful. But I very good question. Well, yes, I, you know, definitely have struggled with that, you know, over the past year or so and just feeling like I've regressed, like I didn't do anything with my life up to this point and that, you know, uh, everyone told me so and I should have listened and, and it's awful to have to feel that way because I know my situation is different from the typical trajectory that was placed upon me. You know, um, there's just so much, you know, that needs to be done in our world to help allow, you know, understanding and compassion. And for myself, I think it's very important for me to give myself that understanding and compassion, cut out the toxic people in my life, stop letting those people hold me back from what is truly my mission in this life, what is my purpose, is to be able to help make this world a better place for trans individuals like you and me. And um, I want to be able to do that and, and, and feel like I'm not such an adult child, but feel like I'm, you know, a... 28, almost 29 year old woman just gave my age away and that I'm, I am going forward and that the best is yet to come. Yes. And one of those ways to really help a trans individual is through surgery. It's even special, especially facial feminine surgery yeah. for trans women. Yes. I think we need to get over some of the hurdles that in some States it's okay, but in some States they don't cover it. Absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out because that is the surgery that I am going to have the toughest time getting at this point. Um, I've been thankful to get um, a few other surgeries at this point, but um, as I've asked, facial feminization surgery or facial gender affirmation surgery, those are not as accessible. Um, one, they're more expensive than top and bottom surgeries. So I think, you know, insurance uses that as a reason not to have to pay for it and to try to find every excuse under the sun to deem it as cosmetic and, and not medically necessary. Um, but I do think there's still a large amount of ignorance out there um, and negligence to understand what is really going on. And I think that there's a lot of work in terms of educating people like we're doing right now, just, just talking on the phone, which is such a fulfilling thing and such an important thing. And um, but yeah, there are so, there are so many barriers. Um, there's gatekeeping among the cisgender population and saying, oh, well, you know, um, you had your top and bottom surgery, so that must be enough. Your face looks fine. You, you, you have a big nose like Barbara Streisand. Nothing wrong with that. It's just like, no, my big nose did not come out of femininity. I came from a male puberty that I did not want to have to go through, that I had to go through. And so, therefore, that damage needs to be reversed for my mental health to ease my dysphoria like many other trans individuals. And so, but yet the access is very difficult compared to the other surgeries, which are also difficult in some states even to access. I'm thankful to be in a state that's not the best, but it's not the worst either. So I've been able to get a few of my surgeries out of the way, or I have one coming up next week, a top surgery. So, but, but with facial feminization surgery, I mean, that's the one that I think, um, guys bottom surgery and, and my trach shape is, is really meaningful to me and just being able to look at myself and feel like I see who I feel like inside. And that is a very psychologically important thing for one's mental health. And um, there definitely needs to be a lot of awareness raised. And, and believe you me, I am raising that awareness as much as I possibly can. And I'm thankful to even have the opportunity to talk about it with you right now. 
Yeah, I think it's an important subject to talk about, so that way trans people can start to talk about this stuff and move forward. Yes. And next time I talk to you, I'm going to talk to you about workplace discrimination and how hard it's been. Because that, yes. that, I want to do that in a separate video because I think that one's such a big one. It'll take a while to talk about that one. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, just like to put it this way, you know, that very much has to do with the feeling like an adult child, you know, the, the, the work, you know, and or the lack thereof, lack of qualifications or what have you for dealing with what we dealt with over the years. But that's another subject in itself. Yeah, it is. Well, Erica, it has been such a pleasure talking to you. I just want everybody to know, please go down to the links below in the description box where I'm going to put her social media links. Erica, you have a lot to say, and there's a lot more we still have to do in order to move forward. But yes. I think by having discussions like this and discussing with other trans people and also cis people and trying to find common ground, that we can try to move forward and try to get things done. Exactly. 100%. That is yes. And, and I believe that things can get done. I do believe that they are getting done and they will continue to get done. And it's just it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Sometimes, you know, when we want things, we don't get them. But, you know, that doesn't mean we're not going to get them. Yep. Thank you, Erica.